Hello everyone, welcome to another shmup topic video. Today's subject seems to be growing in importance with each passing video and with each passing review, which is what I mean when I say the term Euro shmup, because I've noticed in the comment section a lot of people recently aren't quite sure what I'm even talking about, or even worse, they're getting offended by the term and saying like, hey, I'm going to unsubscribe and block you for using this term because you're talking down on Western developers and you're a Japanese elitist and all that sort of thing. And so to avoid your wrath and also to try and get this more established and understood, when I use the term Euroshmup, I am not actually referring specifically to the region of origin. Now, historically, that is where the term comes from. Historically, the term comes from, and I did not invent the term, by the way, the term comes from when in the uh, era of shmups, a lot of Western design shmups fell into these problems, fell into these pitfalls. And so for a long time, if it was a European shmup, you would just know, oh, it's a Euro shmup because <laughs> it came from Europe. But as time has gone on and as the fluency within the design of the genre has grown outside of the confines of Japan, the term doesn't necessarily just mean hey, it's from Europe. Instead, I would say that Euro shmup is a Western design philosophy, which tends to lead Western shmups down the wrong direction. So it is not actually just region of origin. Americans can make Euro shmups. Chinese people can make Euro shmups. Korean people can make Euro shmups. European people can make Euro shmups, but also occasionally a Japanese studio can make a Euro shmup. Conversely, you can have shmups that come out of Western developers, European developers that are not Euro shmups in their design. Stuff like Zero Ranger, of course, Blue Revolver, the upcoming Gun Vein, Demonizer, and many more. All of those avoid the pitfalls of what I would say is the Euro shmup. And so with all of that established, let's talk about what are these pitfalls specifically. The first one that definitely comes to mind that it's like the red flag. As soon as you see it, Euro shmup, Euro shmup, as soon as you see it, which is inertia in your movement. And even though some of these game mechanics we'll talk about in this video may be signs of the Euro shmup, that doesn't mean they necessarily make your game a Euro shmup, except inertia. <laughs> I have yet to see a shmup with inertia in it where I thought, oh, that totally worked. The shmup pulled that off. I've yet to see it. My mind's open, but I've yet to see that. The reason why is because it is so fundamentally a bad idea for the genre. Because you're basically taking the core mechanic of the genre, the eight-way movement, and you are screwing it up horribly. So the reason why is... When you add inertia, not only are you adding delay to the beginning of the movement, because when you start following the rules of gravity and acceleration and all that, blah, 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 you don't go from like zero to 100, right? You have to accelerate into that. And so you have that whole lag time of acceleration that is also fluctuating too. So you don't even get really consistent sort of lag lead in, right? But so you have the delay when you start to move, which is just cutting down on your reaction time. And then after that, you actually have the delay after you stop moving. So when you release the input, your ship's still going. And so what's that do? Well, now that's adding extra lag on top of the lag in the beginning. So you're getting hit with delay on both sides. You delay when you start the input and you delay when you release the input, which means that you're just losing that narrow band of reaction time that shmups give you. And it's narrow. In really good shmups, you do not have a lot of time to react. And it just shrinks it even tinier turns it into this little baby thread and so what's that matter right you may say oh well a good player can react to anything if you can react to hibachi's final attack what's the problem playing a euro shmup what's the problem with acceleration well the problem is is that the game design all follows that initial mistake in my opinion because if you put inertia at the start of your game it has this domino effect through the entire game so that if you start the game, you say, okay, let's have inertia in the movement, and you build the entire game around this concept. If at the end you decide, okay, I'm gonna patch out the inertia, final product you have is still fundamentally flawed because it was all built on the sand, and then it all collapses in on itself. So what happens when you have inertia? Well, typically what you see is games with incredibly basic, dumb patterns, like baby patterns, basically, because the only way to compensate for the ability not to move is to make it so you don't really need to move all that much. 
or you don't need to be able to read anything all that complicated or all that fast. The crazy thing that drives me up the wall when I'm playing a shmup with inertia is that the patterns are coming at me. They are like the most basic baby patterns ever, but they are still difficult to dodge because you're just trying to manage the movement of the ship. It's just making no sense. It'd be like if you're a tennis player and they're like, all right, you want to play tennis here. Here's a stick. Now you play tennis with a stick. I mean, you could. The game would evolve into this really, you know, delicate little smacking back and forth. The precision would be lost. The nuances of the spins and all that, it would just destroy the game. And I think that's the inertia problem. If you bring inertia into a shmup, you're just collapsing so much of the game design right then and there. So that one's a big red flag, I think. If you see inertia in a shmup, bam, throw them in the hero shmup category, at least for now. So that's the first one, but that's not the only one. The second one that I always look for when it comes to Euro Shmup is the way the enemy design and player design works. So the Euro Shmup pitfall is that Euro Shmups, for whatever reason, like to underpower the player. They tend to underpower you. So you are usually a little weak, little baby ship. Your ship is also typically small. For whatever reason, Euro Shmups always have these tiny little ships. Because I think the way it works in Euro Shmup land is like the sprites and the hitboxes are usually one in the same, right? So if you don't want a giant hitbox, you need to have a small ship, something like that. So you have this tiny little ship, and then it shoots this little baby pea shooting, just pew, 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 through the whole game. And then the way Euro Shmup sort of designed the levels is, okay, we're gonna make you underpowered, weak, pathetic, and stupid 80% of the time. And then 20% of the time will give you power-ups and for a brief moment in time, you can feel actually powerful, but that's limited. That's a resource. That's not something you have access to all that often. It's like you're drowning the entire game and then we'll throw you a life preserver for 20 seconds and then you're drowning again. Another hallmark of the Euro Shmup is underpowered main ship. Then the second one is like overly healthed enemies. So Euro Shmups, instead of giving you the typical bullet held Danmaku Japanese style enemies, which is a lot of enemies or a good amount of enemies with lower HP. That way you build up that frenetic pace and that feel and that feedback and it just feels good. Instead, what Euroshmups tend to do is they have a few amount of enemies with a shitload of HP. And so you're just spending a lot of time shooting the same enemy. Usually the, the damage animations are really minimal. The death animations are really minimal. Nothing's rewarding. Nothing feels good. It's just all very static, flat, dull, boring Euroshmup. That's Euro Shmup stuff. And then on top of that, what tends to happen is Euro Shmups have very geometrical style level design. Everything flies in these nice little rows in patterns. Everything lines up so nicely and cleanly. And you just sort of fly along the grid. Oh, go here, go there. Very dictated and closed off level design. There's usually just one way to do it and you're gonna do it. And if you don't do it, screw you. But ironically, that often introduces a test of the Euro Shmup level design that I immediately do. So if you send me your game, the first thing I'm going to do, besides checking for inertia, is I'm going to test, is your game a Euro Shmup level design wise? Because the rule with a Euro Shmup is if you can get away with not engaging, it's usually like really good. So for example, the Euro Shmup sends in this line of enemies, right? And they have a lot of HP. And the game is designed to put a lot of pressure on you to just barely be able to kill them with your little pea shooter as that line comes in. But the developer forgets, wait, there's a whole bunch of other area on the screen you can just fly over. And if you can just fly into that area and just hang out there, you don't even have to do anything. You just hang out. Nothing happens. The enemies just pass by. Basically, what I'm saying is if you can get away and it's actually better as far as survival and strategy to just not engage with things and just hang out and avoid stuff. That's another sign of the Euro Shmup because the developer is leaving so many areas of the screen unchallenged that why bother, right? So that's one of the first tests that I do. But a lot of Euro Shmups have just really basic tracking enemies. And so if you can do what I call the circle strafe, where you just fly in a circle around the game and the game can't do shit about it, that's another example of a Euro Shmup because the game is not challenging the screen. It's just assuming you will engage with it. Your shmups tend to do that. Your shmups don't realize, wait, the player is going to try to not engage with me. Instead, your shmups assume, well, the enemy's there, so you're going to go fight it, right? Like, why wouldn't you? Well, it's because why should I? Make me. 
that's always my design philosophy whenever I'm bug testing my own game or when I'm testing other people's games or doing reviews. It's not, I'm going to do what the game wants me to do. My test philosophy is make me do it. Make me engage. Make me play the game you want me to play. And if I can get away with not playing it, I won't. Sometimes when you give that feedback to developers, developers be like, oh, you're just being a dick. <laughs> Why are you being such a shit, Mark? I want you to fly over there and t test it. It's like, well, I am testing it because I'm avoiding it completely. So you got to force me to do it. So that's another thing about uh, Euro Shmup design that I always point out. It comes up in beat em ups too, by the way. A lot of these principles, you can take them from shmups and you can directly plug them into beat em ups and most of them hold up. So games that just assume you will engage with them. And if you don't, the game the game doesn't have any answer. It's like, what? What am I going to do? That's another example of the Euro shmup. And then some other mechanics that are sort of associated with Euro shmups, but I say don't necessarily have to be Euro shmup are a lot of emphasis on items, power ups, shops, upgrades, RPG style mechanics, that type of stuff. If you're going straight up RPG, you know, type of thing, a lot of cases, I think you're landing in the Euro shmup territory. And there is a reason for that is because it goes against the principle of arcade game design and I have this whole video about the principle of arcade game design it's not a very popular video because it was an older esoteric one but it's one of my favorites actually which is explaining when you're creating an arcade game you don't think of it like a triple-a game or like god of war you know the new one or the last of us or shit like that you cannot think about them like that because they're not these linear cinematic experiences that you play once and then throw in the garbage or take it to GameStop or whatever you do, right? They're not these one deal type of games. They're games that are actually meant to be played over and over and over and over again. So my philosophy when it comes to arcade game design is you think of it like a CD on repeat and you start listening to the CD and then you start hearing these filler tracks like dumbass skits where they call their friend and fart on the phone. That is not something you want to do in arcade. You need all killer, no filler in the arcade game design because everything is supposed to be looped infinitely. So what I'm getting at is if you add five seconds of filler where your ship flies around and text appears on screen, and it's like, and the day was one and it's just this five seconds of filler. Sure. In like a movie, fine. But in this, that five seconds over and over and over and over and over and over is going to compound into an hour. A short amount of time and a short amount of repeat plays, it's going to compound and compound and compound. And now you're just adding all this dead time. And then you start to add more and more and more and more of that. Your game is just Euro as hell. It's just a big pile of Swiss cheese by the end of it. Like getting to the juice of it is not worth the squeeze. So that's another big uh, sign of the Euro shmup is they're just wasting time with all this extraneous stuff, all these extra filler things that aren't gameplay, that aren't core. The actual levels themselves, they tend to be very plodding, taking their time. You fight through a wave and then you just float there for a while. Like, hey, buddy, take a breath, take a piss, come back in five seconds, 10 seconds. You'll nothing will have happened. We really want you to look at that background because we did a lot of work on the background. You know, beat em ups, we've seen this a ton of beat em ups now because they want beat em ups to be three hours, two hours, so you don't return them on Steam. So, like Turtles, uh, Shredder's Revenge, you're just stretching out that level design, stretching it to the point where now you're just wasting the player's time. In the West, for example, there's a whole website dedicated to how long to beat. There is no equivalent website of how dense is the gameplay, which would be sick if someone made a website like that, but that doesn't exist. So this concept isn't really familiar in Western style design. And then finally, I think the last part of the Euro shmup that is the most difficult to remove, you can get a Western developer and you can get them to remove a lot of this stuff with some coaching, with some feedback to be like, okay, inertia is a bad idea. Okay, I can see you, want, you don't want the player to be underpowered. That's a bad idea. You can coach them through a lot of these. This last one is the one that the the Western developers holds on to the hardest that is so hard to get out of their system, which is the emphasis on specific mechanics over fundamental mechanics. So prime example of this that immediately comes to my mind is Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Now this is a beat em up, but this will apply in shmups as well. That mother dodge roll, the dodge roll where the game really wants that dodge roll to be used. So what it will do is it will punish 
spacing. It will punish the fundamentals of spacing and trading hitboxes and understanding that. And it's saying, no, no, no. Instead, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit me three times and then you're gonna dodge roll. And then I'm gonna hit you three times and then I'm gonna do this crazy anger pattern. You're gonna run away, then you're coming back, you're gonna hit me three times and then you're gonna dodge roll. What I call Simon Says Design. And this is all over Western games everywhere. It's like the hot new thing. And the difference is that Western developers embrace this concept and it's considered good. So that design, if you look at reviews of Shredder's Revenge, is considered good design. The Simon Says, Sifu, another one. Sifu came out. The game is a glorified game of Simon Says. It's like, oh, dodge here, parry here. And there's no fundamental spacing in that game. And in fact, the game doesn't actually allow it. Literally, the game will not allow you to space and do that kind of thing because it will like suck you in. And if you try to do like in free form spacing, it won't work. The game will just shove you into this sort of locked in Simon Says mechanic. It's bizarre, to be honest. But what I'm saying is the developers specifically went out of their way to remove that fundamental aspect of the gameplay. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you could subscribe, that would be awesome because I'd really appreciate it because a lot of my videos are very esoteric. And if you don't subscribe, you know, it's hard to run into them in the algorithm. Adios, everyone. Patrons 100 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, B. Reality, Bo, Ben, 4K22, Brian Schiffer, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climbing Coyote, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darren Griffin, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, Fantaside, FCK, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, Haosu, J, Jason Allen, J Lab, JB RPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, KZ, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Larage, Malaise, Matthew Derigish, Maz, Megadeth859, Minang, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Diger Games, Ogle Googles, Philip Mason, Psycho Blizzard, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Robot Parking, Rolf015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw FW, Seven Overdose, Shmup Junkie, Sarah Pong, Steve Fiction, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, DN1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Yutukoi Roots, Wappy Legs, and Yutakaya. Thanks for watching.